today on the UB Basketball Insider Show. It's a busy week for the men's and women's team. We'll get the latest from the head coaches. We'll have our top five plays. We'll warm your heart with the story of the guy they call Coco. The stars are shining today on this edition of the UB Basketball Insider. Basketball fans on your feet. Here come your Bulls. Dante Jordan slithers to the basket. Left side lamp is good on a spin move. Boy, that was slick from Devonte Jordan. It's about us. It's just our, our sisterhood, our foxhole, and we don't compare ourselves to anybody else. We're ready to go. We're ready to play anybody tomorrow. Gets it over to Dillard. Dillard, pump fake, Paul, sets her feet, fires, yes! and we're going to run, and we're going to play that blue-collar style of play. We're ready to go and develop the next chapter. Well, Jim, let's start off by talking about a very important win for your team over Ohio earlier in the week, 76 to 73. It was kind of a churn it out, battle it game, but you had a big second half led by Jonathan Williams and Antoine Johnson. What changed for your team in in the halftime? Well, I think collectively we uh, we played played better defense. Uh, We took care of the ball. We had 10 turnovers at halftime. I think those are the two biggest things. So. Uh, and then we kind of calmed down a little bit. And I thought Jonathan, in the first four minutes of the second half, uh, the game got tied right away. We were down, I believe, six at half. So that was a positive thing in terms of, okay, now we're, we're, we're back on, feeling much better about ourselves. Antoine, I thought, really did a good job kind of keeping us in the game in the first half. With his, not only is, is, is just his overall effort and play, we were really struggling offensively. We had, uh, like I said, turnovers. I thought some some shots that weren't very good and a lot of uh, just one shot one and dones instead of multiple sets and then at the at the basket and also we missed free throws so when you do that it starts compounding at the other end and so I thought finishing the half was important and then um, and get a little bit of momentum but then starting the second half was real positive so right. really happy to see Janathan keep keep emerging as a a player on both ends of the floor. Yeah, I want to follow up a little bit. Nathan had career high 26 in the game. 24 of those came in the second half. That's now eight straight games and Dougal figures. The old cliche is the lights have come on for him, but I yeah. want you to go a little deeper. What is it about his game over the last couple of weeks that has changed? What has he done to help it change? And are we finally seeing what you saw in Janathan a couple of years ago when you were recruiting him? I think the big thing with uh, Janathan has been more maturity. You know, I mean, I think his freshman year, he's adjusting that role where, hey, we can bring you in and, and help us. Uh, but you were not asking you to to be the focal point of helping us win. That's a big adjustment for kids coming in now. Now, hey, look, we need you to perform on both ends of the floor. You need to rebound. You need to take care of the ball. You need to shoot good shots. And we need to play, you know, 25 to 30 minutes a game. And that's a big adjustment. I think he's really starting to come into it. Uh, He works very, very hard. He loves being in the gym. He's a guy always is there before and after stays in there. He likes watching tape. So I think part of that is just kind of the natural progression to see him. I mean, he and Rondo Segu are two guys that kind of like last year, they were our eighth and ninth men. But admittedly, they were not the guys that, hey, look, we're asking them necessary to help us get over the hump. Lots of times they could come in there and give us a good shot in the arm. So they're having to make that mental adjustment along with the physical part of it has been uh, real rewarding to see. And I'm really happy to see him do that. And Rondo's done a nice job. He's had some big games for us too. Um, down in Miami at 16. Mm-hmm. So both those two sophomores, uh, it's still a progression, but I'm seeing um, some light there with those guys. And I'm really happy to see that. And you mentioned Antoine Johnson. He had 11 of his 18 points in the second half. And the story with Antoine has been a little different he's been really struggling over the last couple weeks so as a coach how do you handle a guy that's lost a little confidence his offense his shot hasn't fallen um how have you kind of managed Antoine's head upstairs well I think the big thing is always to all your players can you you got to talk to them about what are you going to do the other 95 percent 
uh, on time on the floor because five percent of the time you might be able to get a shot. So I mean, other than that, you got to guard, you got to play make, you got to talk on the defensive end. I think he's been pretty consistent with that, and defensively he's done a nice job. So one of the things we tell him like immerse yourself into that and then take good shots. I think one of the things that AJ early in the season, uh, uh, Jamie Quarles and Angus Thorpe both sat down with him a little bit on his shot selection and really kind of as a big brother almost point like hey look some of these shots you're taking are really hard shots coach is giving you a lot of freedom but along with it you need to make sure that you're taking the right shot and i think he really you know sometimes you have to look at it and say i, I got to do a better job of that. and i think he really has i think his shot selection has promoted dramatically the last four games and and his efforts always been pretty good but now you see some things coming and he's not just taking the hard jump shot he's a good driver to the basket and a good finisher to the rim he had you know six points i believe uh, going to the basket on uh the other night against ohio so we need to keep mixing it up with him and uh, and keep getting uh, that quality play all right later today a two o'clock tip off for jim's team on the road in mount pleasant michigan against the central michigan chippewas they're 10 and 7 they're 3 and 1 in the mac they're third in the country in scoring. Central Michigan always likes to light it up. What's the challenge as we dive into our town automotive keys to the game? Well, I think the big thing is to stop their transition offense. They're a very good transition like ourselves. They pride themselves on what we call turnarounds. If you made a basket, they come right back at you. Number two is can you guard your area? You like guard guard your yard, as we would say. Is like they're a very good one-on-one team. They move the ball, one, two passes, and they really have the ability to break you down. They've got excellent talent that way. And then the third thing for us is quality offense, quality possessions every time down the floor. You know, don't give one away. You know, get off to a good start, and along with it, make sure that we're taking care of the ball and getting the, our side selected we want. All right, Bulls go for three in a row later today on the road at Central Michigan. Coach, good luck. Thanks, Paul. It's time now for the top five plays of the week presented by ECMC. The difference between healthcare and true care. Number five. Yeah, one of the all-time leading scorers in New York State, the all-time leader in Section 5. But again, here's Buffalo on the fast break. Paul Antoine Johnson getting involved in a big way. Great feed from Javon Graves, and maybe that's what gets Antoine Johnson going. Number four. Dump it down low for Mbala. Kick it out for Jordan. Good ball movement by the Bulls. And it will not result in the three, but an offensive board. Mbala and one. That is just good effort out of Josh Mbala. It helps that he's 6'7 and he's as strong as an ox, but I tell you, that is just pure effort. Number three. Devontae Jordan to the right side for Jonathan Williams. He'll drive in, create some space, spin, and hit. Good move from Williams. Nice patience. Down Bulls to by one, one. Number two. He was just there waiting for Antoine Johnson. Preston has it blocked by Mbala. Breakout for Antoine Johnson against Vanderplas, and it goes. Antoine Johnson is just on another level right now in the second half. Timeout, Ohio. Number one. Driving kicks and penetration from these athletic guards. And I'll tell you what, the defense, it has to lead to the offense. Sagu high off the backboard. Devonta Jordan says thank you very much. Nice play by Sagu uh, to get it at least up there so that Jordan could come follow up with the basket. Coming up, we sit down with women's head coach Felicia Leggett Jack and reveal our top five plays of the week. UB Basketball Insider will be back right after this. Buffalo sports fans, get to Alumni Arena on Saturday, January 18th as the women's basketball team hosts Mac rival Eastern Michigan. If you like long-range threes, intense defense, and up-tempo style of play, then the Bulls are a must-see. Bulls on the run, Hall for three, bullseye! With capacity crowds and increased excitement, you won't want to miss a minute of the action. Tip off is at 2 p.m. For tickets, call 1-877-UB-THERE or visit ubbowls.com. Welcome back to UB Basketball Insider. This segment is presented by Seth Q, changing lives every day. Well, Coach, it's two wins in a row for your team now following a narrow but exciting victory over Bowling Green on Wednesday night. It was an interesting game, mostly dictated by your defense, and I'm pretty sure that's how you mo like would like most of them to be. Well, you know, I, offense is going to fail you all the time. You know, you can work on that gym one-on-one. -on -one, you can get shots up. 
but it's not guaranteed you're going to make those shots. But you can you can guarantee playing defense if you go out there and zip it down, put it in, zip it in, zip it up. That's your heart. And I think that our team was so resilient defensively. We're missing just point blank layups. It's not because we didn't try. They just didn't fall. But defensively, we got after it. Yeah, so the Bulls hold Bowling Green to 59 points. That's now the eighth opponent this year held to 59. And if we go back three years, that is now 47-0 and when the Bulls hold their opponent to 59. And it happened on Wednesday because of that amazing fourth quarter stretch where you keep Bowling Green off the scoreboard for five minutes. Was it anything strategic? Was it just more determination from your team that allowed that 12-0 run to clinch the game? I love what our guards are doing. And, you know, it, Marissa doesn't get a lot of credit. Uh, but when she's in that game, she kind of dictates defensively for our bigs. Although she's a guard, she really kind of understands what we need to get out of the defensive side of the ball. And her coming out, hard hedging out there against their guards and really being able to slide laterally and getting back to the opposite side of the court very quickly had really made, let, allowed our guards to take chances and getting steals on, on the weak side. And so I, I just think that you know, she stepped it up, and then Lauren came in with her long length, and that was really a, a good uh, opportunity for us to, to take more chances with our guards. And I can't say enough, T uh, Jessica's shot is doing okay for us yesterday. It, it, it failed her, but our defense, she did a tremendous job defensively for us. Yeah, and another one of the sort of emerging players, along with Lauren and Jessica, has been Adebola Adie. Yeah. She's been one of the top rebounders since Mac play has started, and you can see that her offense from her rebounding is starting to get a lot better is are, are those the observations that you're making her putbacks is what we need her to be uh, doing for us and we just need her on the court I mean she, she got to understand I love your passion but you can't go out there and clobber people <laughs> <laughs> they got rubberies <laughs> on the streets they got cops for that you know <laughs> and we tease her and she's getting better but she wants it so badly that she goes out there and her and, I, and you know what I can calm that down I love that energy that we're trying to um, get it um, placed in the right position right now it's displaced but it's the right kind of energy and I just love her upside. I mean, she wants this thing seriously. Uh, DeAsia Fair comes off, comes back into the lineup and kind of picks up right where the nation's fifth leading scorer does with another 26 points. Uh, what did you see from DeAsia in the game and how she handled everything surrounding the last week or so? Players play. She's a player. She's special. She's one of the special players that probably is ever going to come through here. There's a Sierra Dillard and there's a DeAsia Fair. And uh, I, I just think that she knows the game. Her IQ for the game is special. She, at the beginning, kind of let the game come to her, and that took about 37 seconds. And then <laughs> she let herself be herself. And um, I think that uh, I think we're back. I think that she's ready to understand that this game is a game that you can't take for granted. It can be taken away from you. And that moment, I think she realized that I got to really appreciate my time on this floor because you never know when it cannot be a part of it. I just loved her, um, her humility, and I love her heart, and I love her oneness for this team. Later today, right here at Alumni Arena, the Bulls will go for three wins in a row when they welcome the Eastern Michigan Eagles. It's a 2 o'clock tip-off. Uh, let's dive into the Eagles a little bit with our town automotive keys to the game. They're playing really well. They're 3-1 and one in MAC play. What is going on with Eastern Michigan that has impressed you? Everything. They're fast. They're aggressive. They're athletic. Uh, they got a big kid down low who can really, really post up, and we struggled in our last game against a post player that was strong like that. So my coach are breaking film down now. I'm really um, nervous about, always nervous, but I, I just really got to focus in on just us, what we do, what are we good at? And I think their amazing offensive prowess is going to be challenged by our defense. All right, let's wrap this up by focusing in on you. And I know you don't like this kind of stuff, but a win against Eastern Michigan on Saturday means you tie the UB all-time record for coaching victories. Significant, how important to that? What does that say about what you've been able to do here? We're just one day at a time, man. Not taking anything for granted, not assuming anything is given to you. Just humbled uh, by this opportunity and, and grateful. And every day I'm here, I'm just trying to uh, uh, show Buffalo, uh, the city, our, our great president and our amazing athletic director, that you know I, I, I'm the person for the job. And every day I, I want you to, I want to prove it to you. And that's just what it means. It doesn't mean that I'm better than anybody else that came through here. It's just I'm just on a mission to show. People people that 
uh, I, I, I don't take this for granted. And I am so honored to be the head coach for this women's basketball program. And together, we're going to make this thing better. All right, come on out and see Felicia do what she does so well today, 2 o'clock, here at Eastern, here at Alumni Arena, Eastern Michigan versus Buffalo. Coach, good luck. Thank you so much, Sirius. Thank you for all you do. It's time now for the top five plays of the week presented by ECMC. The difference between health care and true care. Number five. And another steal. De'Asia Fair glides in and scores. It's a one-point game. Number four. Final 30 seconds of the first half. Nice pass to De'Asia Fair. She's got 12 points already. Number three. Fair will step back and throw a three way off, scraping the Raptors at Alumni Arena, and it goes. Her first points of the second half. 15 now for De'Asia Fair. Number two. On Wuka, aggressive to the hoop and hits. That's and nice it's Buffalo by one. That's nice to see. She challenged the big inside and one for 10 before that shot. Number one. Double teamed is De'Asia Fair. She breaks it, gets it to Hall. Shot clock's at five. Fair's gonna have to shoot. She'll whip it across. Christie shoots it and hits. You can't draw it out any better than that, Hall. You lose the, use the entire shot clock right in front of your bench. Beautiful shot, but I gotta say. Coming up, it's a Bulls digital biography. Devontae Jordan shares his story next. Welcome back to UB Basketball Insider. This segment is presented by Town BMW, the official auto partner of UB Athletics. Welcome back to the UB Basketball Insider Show from courtside here at Alumni Arena. Bulls guard Devontae Jordan has embraced his role as the team's senior leader. On the court, he's having a great season, filling up that stat sheet every game. Points, rebounds, assists, and steals. He loves leading the way and showing the rest of his teammates the path to success. Devontae Jordan, the senior point guard at the University of Buffalo on the men's basketball team. Jordan drives down the right side lane, step by the fender and lays it into the left hand. First, I started off playing football, and then I got to middle school, and my coach had told me, because I missed the game, I mean, I practiced, so he told me I couldn't I either could play football or basketball, so that was when I made the breaking point of which part I'm going to play. I chose basketball after that. I just kept working hard to play basketball and get better. When I was at Monverde, I was playing against the top of the top. Even in practice, I was playing against the best players, so it kind of prepared me for going to college and playing against the best players. Last year, the season meant pretty much the world to me. Just knowing I had five seniors that pretty much came here, bought into the, the culture, and just going out and, and making their last year a fun ride. That run right there was a run I never forget. Um, that run was something that many college teams never do. And for us to do that at the University of Buffalo, meant a lot. I think I felt like I was at my best when I was being able to be, stay composed and keep the team together and just be able to make open shots and lock down defenders. My thoughts at first was, okay, we keeping the same, the same concept. Uh, it's gonna be a more defense orientated uh, team. When, now that I've been working out with him and seeing how he coached at, co at the head position, it's pretty much the same. I just think that Coach White's gonna lead us in the right direction. Uh, this year is very important to me. You know, it's my last, my last ride until I get out there in the real world. And um, it's, it's, it's amazing that God blessed me to be in this position at this time. So I'm just blessed. My goal for this season is to maintain my composure throughout the whole season and just help my team get another championship. The MAC defensive player, you know, I was a runner up last year with my one of my best friends, Dante Carruthers, but uh, I think it's all mine now. The potential for this team, my see is repeating the Mac. Uh, I see us, I see a group of guys that bought in, no one over each other, everybody serve each other and just play together and just be continue to keep that blue collar mentality. Coming up, there's a big week ahead at Alumni Arena. 
We break down all of the events coming your way next. Here at UB, we are asking the big questions. We're looking at the forces that surround us. We're questioning them and respond. We look at education in a whole new way. This is where research and community come together. The beauty of being a scholar has been to communicate beyond the disciplines. It only takes a few inspiring minds to make magic happen. There's no limit to what you can discover. This is UB Basketball Insider, presented by ECMC. The difference between healthcare and true care. Welcome back to the UB Basketball Insider Show. My name is Paul Peck. It's a busy time of the year here around Alumni Arena. All the sports are going. Even the spring sports are getting ready to begin their season. So as you might imagine, it's a very busy week ahead. The men's basketball team has a pair of home games this week. On Tuesday, the Western Michigan Broncos gallop into Alumni Arena. Then on Friday, the home of the Bulls will be a showcase on national TV. The CBS Sports Network is coming to town to show everybody in the nation the Bulls showdown with Mac East rival Kent State. The women's team hits the road for a pair of important MAC showdowns. On Wednesday night, the Bulls are on the road in Muncie, Indiana to take on the Ball State Cardinals, one of the top teams in the Mid-American Conference. Then on Saturday, the Bulls stay on the road and visit Kent State for their annual showdown with their MAC East rival. John Stutzman's UB wrestling team has been the masters of the mat lately. They'll look to stay hot when they welcome Kent State into Alumni Arena. The match starts at 2 o'clock on Saturday. It can also be seen on ESPN+. The men's tennis team gets their season started with a trip to the Ivy League. The Bulls will take on Brown on Friday, then visit Princeton on Saturday. The UB swim team travels to the Buckeye State to take on Toledo next Saturday. On that same day, the UB track and field team goes to Ithaca for the Upstate Challenge. And that's your week ahead in UB Athletics. For more information on any of these events, visit ubbulls.com. It's a busy basketball Saturday. The men are on the road at Central Michigan. The UB women's team is home right here at Alumni Arena. It's a two o'clock tip off with Eastern Michigan. You can hear it on ESPN 1520 radio. You can see it on ESPN three. We'll see you next week on the UB Basketball Insider.